All right, friends, here we go with our next music lesson. We're going to learn about the music of Japan. We're going to start off with like a crash course going through um, the early centuries of Japanese music history and checking out a little bit of the little samples from each one. We're going to start off with the 7th to 10th century, and the primary music was Gogaku. It's a highly sophisticated music that was played only in imperial courts, Another type that was popular back in this period was the shomyo music, which was chanting and prayers and scriptures used with the Buddhist priest. So we're going to check out this gogaku and hear what it sounds like. So we're going to keep moving on, but there's a lot going on here. we got these instruments that look guitar-like with only one, two, three, four frets and some big picks, but they're not guitars. We'll get into that in the next uh, episode. We're going to... Alright, and the next big movement was the no, which was 7th, or no, 11th to 16th century, Middle Ages, and it was more of a theater production. We'll watch a little bit of this crash course for our crash course. In terms of non-mythical origins, sacred dance was part of Shintoism, the traditional religion of Japan. Particularly important was Kagura, or god music, a dance performed by priestesses. But in the 6th century CE, Buddhism arrived, and with it, Japan adopted additional forms of dance and ritual. We know about some of these from a 712 CE text called Records of Ancient Things. Sort of does what it says on the tin. In 782, some killjoy nobles nix palace entertainers who were then taken in by Buddhist and Shinto temples, at which point worship got a lot more exciting. Maybe you're noticing some similarities with the rise of liturgical drama in the West? No has two more immediate predecessors. Dengaku, or field music, possibly originated in Korea. It was associated with spring rice sowing and fall rice harvest festivals, and included comedy, juggling, and dance. Sarugaku, or monkey music, possibly originating in China, featured animal acts and nudity. More significant for now, Sarugaku also included dance theater, in which the chorus would speak the lines for the main character when the dance became too vigorous. 
In the 12th century, Buddhist temples adopted Sarugaku no, a cleaned up version of the Sarugaku as a teaching tool. Even without animal acts, we're still a pretty long way from no proper though. The real defining moment came with Kyotsugu Kanami, an acclaimed Sarugaku no performer. When he shows up, Japan is structured as a shogunate, meaning that while there's an emperor, most of the ruling is done by the shogun, the highest ranking general. The shogun in the late 14th century is Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, and he is big time into culture. He becomes a patron to Kanami, and then a patron and lover of Kanami's son, Zeami Motokyo. Father Kanami manages to combine Sarugaku no with stories borrowed from classical Japanese sources, like the tale of Genji, and then ties the whole thing up with a Buddhist bow. Son Zayami then takes that form, perfects it, and writes some theory about it. Because, I mean, come on, someone's got to be doing theory at your theater, right? Zayami also writes about a hundred of the plays considered no canon. And guess what? We still have 21 of them. Yes! sources. No plays are short, only 10 or so pages long, but they take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours to perform, which may seem like a nice, reasonable evening at the theater, but when there are five types of no play and court entertainment includes one of each type, performances could last a butt-numbing eight Hours. Each play consists of two scenes, and most involve a ghost, a demon, or a tormented human who can't rest. The language is a mix of verse and prose, most of it sung or chanted. Every no play ends with a dance. The five types of no play are the kami mono, which involve the sacred story of a Shinto shrine. Shura mono plays are about warriors like Atsumori, we're gonna meet him soon. Kazura mono plays, or wig plays, are about wigs. JK, they're about ladies who were played by wig-wearing men because, surprise, surprise, dudes only. The fourth type of no play is basically a grab bag, though it often included Gendai mono plays, which told naturalistic stories, or the Kyojo mono, aka Mad Woman plays, which are sad wig plays about a woman who loses a child or a lover and then goes insane. The final type, the Kichiku Mono, or demon plays, feature supernatural beings and have the coolest masks. I mean, look at this. All right, so that's a little bit of an intro into no plays. We are going to keep moving. Now we're going to look at the later Middle Ages, 17th century to 1867. Wrap up the first episode. We're going to have uh, two episodes of the history of Japan through like a crash course musically. Um, to wrap this one up, I made um, an, off our Australian rock and pop, I made a, a version of the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Tell me what you think. <laughs>